All right, welcome everybody on the session on CICD support for the cloud starters. Obviously, all disclaimers uh, apply. Um, and I would also like to mention that the uh, previous session is now available for download from my colleague Jeremy Smith on uh, creating contextual help. So if you haven't seen that one already, please go ahead and uh, have a look at that session. All right, so then we'll talk about CICD with the Cloud Starter Toolkit today. I've created a little bit of an agenda and we'll first talk about the Cloud Starter Toolkit itself. Then why do we actually care about CICD? Then I'll talk about the TCLI or the command line tool within the Cloud Starter Toolkit. And then we'll go over uh, setting up a few build pipelines. All right, so in December, we released version two of the Cloud Starter Toolkit. Um, and we actually did a session on that in December as well. So if you haven't checked that one out, also go ahead and look where we go over all over in detail over all the new things that are in the toolkit. But today we will focus on the uh, CI CD integration uh, parts. Now, why do we care about CI CD? Um, it's actually kind of the immune system of your solution. Right, so you continuous deploying to your production environment. So you continuously giving your customers uh, new, new features. Um, and if your customers have change requests, you can roll that out quickly. So you can quickly jump into those opportunities. So that's kind of an outside defense of your system. But it's also more of an inside uh, defense when developers create bad code or tests fail or something like that, you figure it out very, very quickly if stuff doesn't work or doesn't deploy. So that's why in the Cloud Starter Toolkit, we've created this support for CICD and mainly with a command line interface tool that we'll talk about in uh, detail. So um, you can go ahead and install Node.js and then you can install the command line tool by using the following command. And after you've done that, you can check if that uh, tool is working just by typing TCLI-V or that it should print the version. And then you go to a folder on your computer. It can be any folder. I typically use an empty folder. Then if you're in that folder and you run TCLI, what the TCLI will do, it will try to find a file called typicalcloud.properties. If it can't find that file, it will give you four options. And obviously one of those options is to create that file. So once you, once you go ahead and you create that file, um, it looks a little bit like this. So it contains all sorts of information to connect to the typical cloud. It contains information around the workspace of your cloud starter, etc. And then when you run TCLI again, in that folder that you have that typical cloud property file, you basically get a list of tasks that you can choose from. And this is a very extensive list. There are, there are 55 tasks that you can actually use. And I'll talk about these tasks in a little bit more detail later. But we could, for example, run the task show cloud starter links. And this will give you a list of all the cloud starters that are currently deployed in your environment. And you can basically see the versions, the build date, and click on their uh, links. Now, the second option that you have is managing a global property file. And if you run that action to manage the global property file, you can basically set up connection configuration to the typical cloud that will then live in the global NPM folder. And then from your local typical cloud property file, you can use properties or you can say for properties, use global. And this helps a lot when creating cloud starters. So we've done presentations in the past uh, and there are videos on YouTube on how to create a cloud starter from a template. So I won't go on that in detail today, but let's say you create a few cloud starters. They all have their own typical cloud property file. And now they can use this use global mechanism to basically connect to the typical cloud to deploy it. It's also very handy when you have different branches of the same uh, cloud starters where you're working on. And then you can run TCLI within these cloud starter folders. And you could do, for example, uh, test cases. You could run your test cases there. All right, now, now let's talk about the list of tasks that are available in the uh, TCLI. Obviously, there are a number of tasks to manage the TCLI itself. 
Then there are a number of tasks to uh, manage the connection with the typical cloud, with the uh, OAuth tokens. And then there are obviously a whole bunch of tasks that allow you to manage your cloud starters, to show the cloud, to test the cloud starter, build the cloud starter, deploy it, and also delete cloud starters if you want to. Then there is a number of tasks to uh, manage live apps because cloud starters inter interact with live apps heavily. So you can basically add people to groups or uh, look at live apps cases and all sorts of stuff like that. And then there's a number of tasks to manage uh, shared state. Cloud starters typically uh, depend a lot on shared state where you, uh, where you store configuration. So in this way, you can go and update configuration move configuration from one environment to another. And then there are a number of tasks to um, manage the typical cloud itself. So some additional tasks like showing the TCI apps, browsing the Spotify library, or seeing some summary on uh, messaging. All right, now let's talk about build pipelines. And that's actually where that fourth option comes into play. When you run the TCLI in an empty folder, you have an option to create a multiple property file. And once you do that, you basically get this manage multiple cloud starters dot properties. What I typically do, you know, don't need to do that, but I create an environment folder. Uh, and inside of that environment folder, I run TCLI again. And obviously I get a typical cloud property file there. And then I run the TCLI generate cloud property file. Once you do this, you get a property file for every environment that you want to connect to. So every environment that you want to include in your uh, build pipeline. All right, so let's move this a little bit up. And so what we can do now in the main folder is we can, use, we can run TCLI multiple interaction or just short TCLI-I. And what will happen is you get into a menu where you basically see all the individual environments and then you can run actions on those different environments. So you can choose the task and run that on one specific environment or you can run this on all environments. So in this example, we show what live apps cases exist in those multiple environments. But it's also very handy to, for example, go and monitor a TCI app in a specific environment or compare TCI apps from various environments. All right, now what is also defined in this manage multiple cloud starter property file are the cloud starter jobs. And the jobs basically consists out of a number of tasks and those tasks can be of various types. So they can be operating system commands, they can be other TCLI tasks, or they can be script tasks. And then if you run TCLI-M or DCLI-multiple, it basically goes over all these jobs and executes them. And what is also nice is you can run TCLI-M and specify the job name that you want to run and specify the environment name that you want to run it on. And this is kind of how that multiple property file looked like. So you have deploy, you have some environments, uh, you have some de deploy commands, which you can all set there. What is also interesting to know when it comes to build pipelines is that you can basically extend this file. So you can create a specific file for Windows, a specific file for Linux, but you could also create one for, let's say Jenkins, and you can call it yourself. And you kind of extend these files and they obviously reuse all the properties that are set in a common file. And if you look at the, uh, obviously the fi files at the bottom, those properties take precedence over the uh, properties that are defined in the common one. Now, when we take all of this, we can check this into um, a source repository system, and we basically have a build pipeline. And this is where the um, build pipeline technologies come into play. So we will discuss three uh, here. So the first one is Jenkins. The second one is Team Silly, and then lo uh, last GitHub Actions. And then Jenkins, we actually split it out into two methods, the classic Jenkins and then Jenkins pipeline scripts. So in the classic method of Jenkins, we use a plugin called the build pipeline plugin. And then basically every task in that build pipeline runs 
means one specific job on one specific environment that we have configured in that multiple file. And in this way, we get our build pipeline set up. The same, or the same applies kind of for the second method, which is Jenkins pipeline script, where you kind of store your pipeline as code. So you have configuration as code. So you have a history of your pipeline. You can see who changed what, who checked something in. And then you can see the result of that as well. And obviously every step of that build pipeline is another run of a specific job on a specific uh, environment. And in that way, we can integrate with the Jenkins pipeline uh, script. And in this nice new UI of Jenkins, you basically uh, see the result. The third method is Team City, uh, which is another kind of build pipeline tool. Uh, and in Team City, we can create projects. And, and these projects consist out of different build uh, steps. And every build step then corresponds with one specific run of the TCLI-M and then specify the job name and an environment name. And in that way, we can set up a build pipeline inside of Team City. And then you can obviously see the results where the um, property files are mentioned and the job in the environment uh, is mentioned that it will run on a specific step. Uh, the fourth method is GitHub Actions. And this is actually nice because you don't need to set up and configure a build server and you can go ahead and run the TCLI on the GitHub action and GitHub will actually run it for you. And here you can see uh, that the TCLI runs there as well. Um, I made a quick comparison. It's a bit of a short uh, presentation to go into this in, in detail. Uh, but the big advantage of Jenkins is that there's lots of information, a lot of examples. The advantage of Team City is that it's obviously backed up by a professional organization. And I would say the advantage of GitHub Action is that there is no build server required. And if you use GitHub already, it's very easy to use, right? But the disadvantage is also kind of that there is no build server. So kind of you miss a little bit of your aggregated view of all the different pipelines that you, uh, that you have. So to summarize the session of today, with CICD, you can basically deploy changes for your users with more confidence. In other words, you get, you get a better night rest, rest, right? You can use the TCLI tool to manage your cloud starters and then set up the build pipelines. Then you can execute these uh, pipelines with various CICD technologies like Jenkins, TeamCity, and GitHub Actions. Um, so I actually want to announce the topic for next time. My colleague Jörg Grote will talk in next month about an application gallery for cloud starters, which is kind of like a portal to manage all your cloud starters and give your users easy access to all of those different cloud starters. If you're not familiar with the TIPCO cloud, you can always go and sign up for a free cloud trial, for example, with TCI or Spotify or Live Apps. And I would also like to point out that everything I talked about today is available through uh, an online web page with documentation. And we actually just renewed this documentation as well, which contains lots of information on how to set up the uh, CICD pipelines. Then there are also our monthly webinars. And there was uh, one last week from Nelson, our CTO, around what's coming for TIPCO Labs in 2021. So if you haven't checked that one out, I would also recommend you to go and check that one out. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.